Yes. Within two minutes. Within two minutes. All right. All right. Dr. Ruplal, your slides were very clear. I saw your slide. Very clear. Thank you. Yes. You tell me start it. Sir, you can start. Nina, ma'am. No, I will just uh, talk one minute. Okay. And then Dr. Nina will take over. So you start, sir. Please start. Today is a great day. It is Teacher's Day. On this great day, we have a pioneer of microbiology, Professor Roop Lal, with us. Dr. Roop Lal, will give us a talk on this auspicious day. Over to Professor Nina Mehta, who is a Dean of Rayat Bahara University. Dr. Nina is also a coordinator of Chandigarh. Over to Nina. Thank you, sir. Hello, good morning. Uh, hello. So, respected uh, Dr. Swaranjit is president uh, of Microbiology Society of India, Chandigarh unit. He is uh, leading us all in Chandigarh for the microbiology, growth of microbiology in the society. Veteran Dr. Arvind M. Deshmukhji, <coughs> president of Microbiology Society of India. And our today's guest, Professor Roop Lalji, who is... Uh, an eminent scientist in the field of microbiology is uh, going to deliver on this very good occasion of Teacher's Day, uh, a very beautiful lecture on microbiome literacy for better management and societal problems. He's from the Energy and Source Institute, New Delhi. Professor Lu Plan is the INSA Senior Scientist at Department of Zoology, University of Delhi. He is the Fellow of Indian National Science Academy, New Delhi, Fellow of National Academy of Sciences, Allahabad, India, Fellow of National Academy of Agriculture Sciences, and the Fellow Academy of Microbiology Sciences, India. Presently, he is also the Senior Ambassador of International Society of Microbial Ecology, the Netherlands to the Indian Ocean region. Recently, he has been appointed as the senior ambassador to India by the Federation of European Microbiological Societies. He is also the senior ambassador to a newly created form, International Microbial Literacy Initiative Resources to spearhead the microbial literacy campaign in India as well as abroad. Professor Rooplal is the founder, honorary director to Pfizer Private Limited. He has taught UG, PG students and supervised nearly 75 PhD theses and mentored more than 120 postgraduate and undergraduate students. He has long standing experience in research in the area of microbial diversity, genomics, and metagenomics. He has extensively explored the molecular and genetic aspects of hexachlorocyclohexane degradation, explored microbial diversity, published over more than 50 novel bacterial species, sequenced more than 30 bacterial genomes, carried out comparative genomics, that is more than five projects, and metagenome analysis, five metagenomes he has done. His research has led to the identification and functional characterization by using metagenomic approaches of microbial and viral communities at Manikaran Hot Springs. His group has also explored microbial diversity and its role in degradation of hexachlorocyclohexane at a polluted dump site located at Umari village, Lucknow. His group has been invited to contribute five chapters to Berge's Manual of Systematics of Archaea and Bacteria. 
He has also developed just, an analog of reformycin uh, by genetically Sorry. manipulating the reformycin biosynthetic gene cluster of an antimicrobacterium. Professor yeah, Lal has so much to his credit. <laughs> Professor Lal was edited in. Uh, Dr. Amita, please mute your uh, mute your. Uh, uh, Dr. Amita, could you please mute your phone? Professor Lal was editor in chief of Indian Journal of Microbiology till 2013 and also serving as a member of the editorial board in the various leading scientific journals like M Systems, Environmental Microbiology, Environmental Microbiology Reports, BMC Biotechnology, BMC Biochemistry, Microbial Biotechnology, Indian Journal of Microbiology, and many more. So I don't know where to end. He has so much to his credit that we are, you know, fortunate to have him with us. Professor Ruplal was chairman of Board of Research Studies, head Department of Physiology, Dean Faculty of Science, Dean Examination, member of Executive Council and Academic Council, and member of several national and international bodies. He is a member of various committees of DBT, DST, and many other such higher committees. Professor Lal is the recipient of several prestigious fellowships, including the Alexander. One hundred World uh, Fellowship for Germany, GBT Overseas Fellowship, and Indo US ASM Fellowship Professorship in Microbiology. He was a visiting scientist at the University of Cambridge, University of Karlsruhe in Germany, and Oregon State University, Oregon State University, USA, Switzerland, University of Lausanne, Switzerland, and so many other countries. He is the recipient of Endeavor Executive Fellowship. Moselo Schuster Distinguished Service Award from American Society for Microbiology. And Professor S.R. Vyas Memorial Award, Professor B.N. Jory Award on his microbial diversity by the Association of Microbiologists of India. So he also was a member of several national and international committees, as I said. And I would invite Professor Rooplal for today's talk. He was also the NASA Senior Scientist Platinum Jubilee Fellow at the Energy and Resource Institute, ISC Complex, New Delhi. Welcome, sir. Thank you, ma'am. So I, I invite uh, him, uh, and I hope we have had, you know, little bit of what he has done, more, more than what I have just spoken. Thank you so much, sir, for uh, being here to enrich our knowledge. Please, sir. Uh, so are you able to see my screen? Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, the, yes. so you can see the screen, right? Right. So shall I begin now? Uh, at the outset, I must uh, thank Professor Deshmukh, President, Microbiological Society of India, who's really uh, guiding uh, many young and uh, energetic colleagues uh, to take up microbiology to different heights uh, and also to fulfill the need of a uh, uh, role of microbiology, its propagation among uh, uh, society and even among uh, children, which has really become very important. Uh, I'm also thankful to Professor uh, Swanji Ching, who really very kindly uh, uh, we are meeting after online after a very long time, and he very kindly actually uh, uh, invited me to uh, take up this particular mission further, that is the propagation of microbial literacy. Thank you very much. And then um, Dr. Nina Mehta for a very nice introduction, and uh, also Dr. Amita Mahajan, who all are uh, organizing uh, this particular uh, online lecture. I'm speaking on a, and I have spoken on this particular topic a large number of times. And uh, uh, every time I probably, it's very close to our heart. And uh, I'm also very sure that my colleagues, including Professor Deshmukh and also Sonjit Singh, they also have felt the need to take up uh, microbial literacy and microbiology which is really very important for a number of years, it remained important only for microbiologists. 
nobody really realized that it's very important even for uh, a society, for children, for administrator, and almost for everybody. So I will just re-emphasize and convince and try to convince you that uh, these are the times that we all microbiologists, and this is happening now in the country and in the international level, that we take up this particular mission to propagate microbiology, to convince those who uh, think that microbiology probably is a subject of microorganisms and uh, neglect them for reasons not known to us. But before I uh, begin my lecture, uh, I would actually, as mentioned by Professor Deshmukh and Sanjit Singh, it's a very auspicious occasion, actually, uh, Teacher's Day. And I also would like to thank not only Professor Deshmukh, Sanjit Singh, and others, but also all my teachers and particularly my students who has always been putting faith in me and guiding me uh, to take up such uh, important issues. Uh, otherwise, as Professor Deshmukh said, that our job at this particular stage is to ignite younger minds actually to take up the challenges uh, which country and the world is facing, especially uh, taking up microbiology to the uh, mass masses. So what I said before I begin actually, talking about microbiome, those who are not really familiar with it. So why do we now say actually that microorganisms are very important, not only for my, uh, microbiologists, but almost for everybody. Now, we keep on talking about protecting our environment, climate change, global warming, and our benefit to human beings and also protecting this particular planet. And every time we talk, we talk about um, plants and animals. I don't think anybody really considers the role of a microorganism, which is uh, something even I consider more than 70 to 80 percent. Probably you all are familiar with that microorganisms, they are almost everywhere. You cannot get actually uh, animals and plants in, in space, in deep oceans probably, or in hot springs. It's very difficult to get uh, animal and plants, but all such situations, you will find plenty of microorganisms. So this probably is not known to our society and even not known to our children, actually, that microorganisms, they are very important. And there is an unlimited world of microorganisms. And there is an unlimited scope of uh, microbes, probably just to convince those who are not microbiologists. It appeared in the newspaper that when you actually shake your hand, you exchange nearly 124 millions of bacteria. And when you do high fi actually it comes to 55. And when you say namaste, probably it is zero. So you can imagine actually the number when I'm speaking to you, when I'm talking to you, probably I'm, I'm interacting with more than 30 millions of microorganisms when I'm breathing, when I'm talking, sitting in this particular room. So all around me, there are microorganisms, but why actually that we are emphasizing? Because it was not known to us. We had been saying that there are microorganisms, but everybody, I'm not actually, my microbiologists don't know it. Uh, even the scientists who are dealing not with microbiology, but otherwise with biology, they know it that now we know the, uh, that there are so many microorganisms around us and they are almost everywhere. Now that has happened as a result of revolution in sequence technologies and computational biology. Well, it was very hard actually to do sequences and to use computational tools sometime in 1980 or 1990 when we were very active in doing research. We know how hard it was, but now sequencing techniques becoming platforms becoming so cheaper and computational biology or tools becoming available almost free of cost. We know actually then we can immediately without culturing the organisms can really uh, uh, make predictions and say for sure that there are large number of microorganisms around us. And the term that nowadays we are using Earlier, we had been talking about single organisms, then group of organisms, but we talk about now microbiome, a collective actually, or a collection of microorganisms in a particular niche, 
along with the genes and their genomes and the functions that they perform. So as a result of sequencing technology and computational biology becoming much cheaper and available to everybody, now large number of uh, microbiome projects were initiated just to mention a few human microbiome project, earth microbiome, American gut microbiome, and even India actually, the human gut microbiome project, they were initiated. And as a result of that, lot more information that has come in, I will not get into the details, but just let you know that we know for sure now that on this particular planet, if you look into the number of microorganisms, when I'm talking about microorganisms, I mean archaea, bacteria, then a, uh, fungi, protozoans, uh, viruses, all of them together. Now, if you look into it, how many microorganisms are there on this particular planet? It comes to something around 0 0.9 to 3.2 into 10 to 5 power 30. And if you look into the number of bacteria, that is around, sorry, viruses, that is around 1 into 10 to power 31 viruses on this particular planet. And the total biomass, living biomass, 30% of the living biomass, these are the scientific facts that is uh, constituted on this particular planet by microorganisms, 30%. So if 30% of the living biomass is constituted by microorganisms, can you really do biology? Can you live actually on this particular planet without understanding the role of microorganism? I think the answer to this question is uh, 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 no. And many of us, in fact, and everybody now uh, knows about it. And for those who are not microbiologists, uh, prior to the uh, uh, coming up of uh, DNA sequencing techniques and computational biology, we only knew about 99.999% uh, of the microorganisms were not known to us. Only for a, for a, uh, 0 0.001% uh, 1 of the microorganisms that we had been able to culture. But now with the in silico studies, we know for sure that the rest of the organisms are how many microorganisms are there in a particular niche or in different niches and also uh, around me. Now, if you look into, I'll show you the next slide. The total biomass, 100% on this particular planet, 80% of it is being constituted by plants. And then 16 or 70% that are recent estimates constituted by microorganisms. The animal and humans makes very little of the total living biomass. Something around you can see 0.003% or human 0.0001%. So 60 or 70 or 20%, I had been earlier telling you 30% of the total living mass is constituted by microorganisms. Uh, and why this 30% of the microorganisms, they are even more important than the plant system for a number of reasons. I've already mentioned a couple of them earlier. They are very unique. They divide very rapidly. They are just to all situations I have mentioned, unlimited world of microorganisms. They live almost in all environmental situations present in all environments. So even they are 30%. Second to actually total uh, uh, plants, which makes around 80% of the biomass, they are far more important than the plant system because of all these reasons, uh, which I have mentioned over here. That's why we say that we need to consider microorganisms in our, in our daily life in order to lead a very good health in order to tell our administrators in advance that microorganisms, viruses, all these are very important. So pay attention to microorganism and microbiology in order to build up the economy of a country and make our people and citizens more and more healthy. As I mentioned, that they interact microorganisms uh, in soil, in animals, in plants, and almost everywhere. And I have mentioned actually in my uh, previous uh, discussion that earlier we had been looking single organism uh, and only for those actually who are not familiar with microorganisms and microbiology. Microbiota, picking up microorganisms from a particular established environment and now we talk about microbiome, where along with microorganisms, we study the full complement of their genes, proteins and genomes in a particular dynamic environment. So 
the term microbiome i will be using very frequently rather talking about but let me tell you again they are so important as i have mentioned i am interacting with and you are interacting with more than 30 million of microorganisms when you are attending to my this particular lecture and perhaps you all will be convinced that we have uh, neglected professor deshmukh knows about it uh, professor sanjit uh, no he knows about it that we have neglected microorganisms uh, uh, to a greater extent we did not consider their role and importance at all but now are the times that we take up this issue on a bigger scale and you all are doing it i am very pleased actually uh, telling almost everybody that microorganisms they are very important especially we need to educate our children or we need to tell members of the society the rickshaw pullers and everybody again to convince you i keep on showing this particular slide the corona virus the pandemic which locked down the entire world for almost and we are not out of it even today now let's consider actually the weight of one corona virus it is something around 8.5 autograms and the number of viruses that are needed to make a person sick is around 70 billion and that comes to around 5 into 10 to power 7 uh, gram let's assume that at one point of time the infected person in the world were something around 2 into 10 power 6 something around 2 million now 2 million viruses will have a weight of less than 1 gram now if less than 1 gram of the viruses can lock down the entire world and put this particular planet on its knees you can imagine actually the role of other microorganism 30% i mentioned here i am only talking about something around less than 1 gram of a virus that has put the entire planet on its knees and as i mentioned even we are today so that is what i repeatedly tell you all understand the importance of microorganism i am only talking here in this particular slide about a single virus is having a weight of less than 1 microgram and that much weight of the virus has really put the entire world into this problem you all are familiar with now uh, in teachers day actually i am thankful to professor deshmukh and sanjeet singh uh, selecting this particular day uh, at least to give me an opportunity to reemphasize to teach almost all young minds and ignite them and let them know that these microorganisms are very important although they make 70% 17% of the total living biomass which is second to plants but they are more important even than the plants and as i mentioned earlier if there are so many microorganisms around us i said that i am speaking i am interacting with more than 30 million of uh, microorganisms you are also doing the same thing and when there are so many and they are almost everywhere they are on the plants they are on this on my skin in the human system uh, in all uh, harsh environments there are microorganisms so can you live a healthy life on this particular planet without understanding the role of microorganisms can you save this particular planet or our environment without understanding the role of microbes can you do good biology and microbiology without understanding the role of microorganisms i think Uh, can you mute it? Okay, thank you. So the answer to all these questions is no. I think by now you are convinced. You have you cannot do good biology, good science without understanding the role of microorganisms. You cannot actually live a healthy life without understanding the role of microorganisms. They have become so important. Now, every twenty-seventh June of every year is celebrated as a World Microbiome Day. Now, I immediately want to come actually the microbiome and human health. That was uh, the uh, uh, yeah. title and focus of my because I want to relate it to the human health so that you really get convinced that we all, even those who are not doing microbiology, those who are not doing. Uh, uh biology they need to understand the role of uh, 
uh, microorganisms. I, I, uh, in my previous slide, I just mentioned that human microbiome project was initiated in some time in 2006. A lot more money was spent in, uh, on this particular effort by many countries, by consortia of countries and scientists in order to find out how many microorganisms are there on my skin, in my nasal cavity, in my oral cavity, in my gut and so on. So it took almost six years to come up with the information. And now we know perhaps that when we are, we are born, our genome is 100% our genome, but immediately after birth, we are taken over by microorganisms and 90% of the genes, they come from microorganisms. Uh, uh, so understand, we only have 30,000 or 23,000 uh, you know, genes, functional gene, genes in human genome. 90% of the newer genes, they come from microorganisms which, they, which take over the body immediately afterwards. And these organisms, you search the net actually, you will realize yourself, they perform those functions which my own gene or my body cannot. I don't want to get into the details, but this is a fact that large number of functions are being performed. As I mentioned, I'll repeat, of course, these figures, they keep on varying. There are around 10 to 13 uh, uh, human cells and almost equal number of microbial cells that are associated. The number of viruses that are associated with the human body or in my gut is something around 10 to power 12. So this, this again, we had been telling actually earlier, probably studying the human physiology and biochemistry in isolation without, without considering the role of microorganisms. We need to train and tell even our doctors that while prescribing medicines, you need to consider the role of microorganisms, which are so many. And especially in my gut, the maximum number of microorganisms in my colon actually is something around uh, 10 to the power 14 actually colony forming bacteria uh, per gram of the fecal matter. So we are a sort of consortia, uh, not only the human genes, but 90% of the genes, they are coming from uh, microorganisms. Did mention earlier that the large number of the maximum number of micro they are present everywhere on my skin, in my oral cavity, in my nasal cavity, or in my eyes, and everywhere. But the maximum number is in the human uh, intestine or in the colon, as I mentioned, uh, 10 to power 12 colony forming unit per gram of fecal matter. Of course, this number keeps on varying. Uh, will not get into this detail. And it also, the type and the number of bacteria and archaea which are present on my body, it also varies from... Please mute your mics. Thank you. So what I'm saying, the number of microorganisms, they differ. Men, women, infant, elder, obese, and almost uh, uh, with the age. So all this has already been understood. And also within a particular system or in a human being, whether it's male or female, there are variations in the number and type of organisms that are present on my, in my body. In my, and the, uh, uh, so probably that, uh, again, I'm, I want to emphasize that microorganisms, they are very important. They are around us. Even when you go to the ATM, you probably exchange the microorganism, somebody else who had come actually to withdraw the money. So that's like everywhere, wherever you go, you interact. And these microorganisms, <laughs> most of you did not know that they are associated uh, for maintaining human health. There are good type of bacteria, there are bad bacteria. So if you want to maintain, and it is already this information is there, that microorganisms, they decide 
probably when there was a corona pandemic actually you all know that within a family uh, many people were infected <laughs> there are one or two individuals who were not infected at all so they had a very good immune system and that immunity was provided by microorganisms so microorganisms they provide the immunity and any shift in the microbial population in my gut especially lead to large number of diseases this is a very old slide i have listed some 13 but there are large number of diseases which are now being associated with the microbial community in my body obesity malnutrition diabetes cancer asthma liver diseases brain functioning depression blood pressure my social behavior my personality everything is now associated with the organism probably if you are short tempered it is not that because you are short tempered but it is because of the microbial community that is there in your gut that makes you short tempered yeah, probably if you understand the this particular thing you will lead a very uh, very good life actually eventually so what i am saying that uh, we had done one study uh, that paper got published in uh, on, and the it was also featured on the cover page of environmental microbiology very much to look into the changes in the gut microbiome of tuberculosis patients and those who are normal so we took samples and we found out that the tuberculosis patients uh, a type of bacteria or population it goes up and those bacteria they produce short chain fatty acid and also they are butyrate and propionate producer and it is already known in the literature that these uh, bacteria which produce these chemicals uh, they actually impair the immunity alter the app- appetite so all this what happens in my system i'll not get into details but the gut microbiome is also being called as second brain there is a nexus between the brain and my gut the organism the bacteria they produce chemicals and these chemicals then and then they provide signals to my brain and make me what i am today so that's what actually has really become very important living with animals it has been it proved actually that those who keep dogs and cats in their houses have got better immunity children who play actually you might have been seen actually the children who play with the dust uh, they have got better immunity than those who live in very healthy environment there lot more uh, it's also now a controversial how clean is too clean आप कितने हाथ धोना है कितने सैनिटाइजर यूज करने इट इज नॉट बेनिफिशियल सो बी वेरी केयरफुल डोंट बिकॉज ऑफ दी कोरोना एक्चुअली पब्लिक इट वाज टोल्ड दैट यू कीप ऑन वॉशिंग योर हैंड्स एंड ऑलमोस्ट एवरीथिंग बट दैट आल्सो पब्लिक विल रिमूव बेनिफिशियल बैक्टीरिया एंड आई डू आई डू वॉश माय हैंड बट फॉर नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स पब्लिक आई एम आई 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 लिटरली stop actually washing hands every time and very frequently as it has been advised and uh, read the literature it is controversial how clean is too clean how clean you need to be as i mentioned your social behavior your personality there are large number of experiments that have been performed with mouse now uh, transplanting actually the microbiome into the micro uh, uh, animals which are which were sterile and then predictions were made that probably uh, even by transplanting uh, uh, fecal mi- uh, microbiota uh, the, there is a information now that diseases which could not be cured by using antibiotics or other means now can there are large number of companies that have come up which are collecting your stool and if your stool is healthy they are sending it and something wrong uh us dollar 50 and you can earn uh, if you are healthy you can earn more than 13000 uh, dollars per year so these are now we had been talking about uh, probiotic which you take along with when you take the antibiotic so now the concept is completely different it will not be a single bacterium it will be a complete microbiome or a collection of bacteria 
that doctors need to prescribe and who, uh, scientists may need to make actually uh, probiotics not based on single organism but collection or number of microorganisms that together can perform the function so there are a lot more i have mentioned actually many uh, there are differences in the microbial community in monozygotic twins dizygotic twins and they alter the behavior that all transplantation has been so if believe it not with these couple of examples because i will not have much time actually to give you more details but what i want to tell you here ignite you and let you let, let you can get convinced that microorganisms are very important even to lead a healthy life and you can change the microbial community you can maintain a very healthy microbial community by changing your lifestyle by changing food habits by stopping taking drugs or antibiotic now how you can do it i know i read that paper which came uh, we are organizing a conference and the lady who wrote this paper sometime into she is speaking in that particular con uh, conference that it is these are the microorganisms which makes you obese or lean i mentioned in the previous slide and you are obese because a particular phylum firmicutes uh, who are fat uh, lover their population is more in your gut bacteria ids uh, make you lean so when i read that particular paper i was around 97 kg sometime in 2011 and everybody was telling me that i am obese because i eat much but i realized from that particular paper that appeared in science from human microbiome project that i am obese not because of my own genes but i am obese because of the bacterial community that is present in my gut so i decided actually to change my in 2011 i was determined to change my I, I, let me tell you very clearly there were two factors that made me obey one is my, my bacterial community the second one was my wife uh, uh, because wives are always they want husbands to be they feel that if, if uh, more and more food is given or whatever used to be left out in the evening my wife used to say ke bhai aap bach gaya hai fridge mein bhi rakhna hai to aap hi kha lo so i used to eat around 10 chapatis uh, at a time so total number of chapati that i used to eat it used to be something 20 to 30 chapatis per day so that means my microbial community used to make me hungry not that my own genes uh, uh, were responsible so i decided actually and my gut was used as a sort of dust bin ke bhai fridge mein kyon rakh dena hai aap hi kha lo isko daily to main hi kha leta tha and then i decided i limited my diet reduced my diet gradually started actually i was very much de determined change my lifestyle now i walk around 15 km a day sun 21000 step my blood pressure and all parameters are not normal and reduced by that around nearly 25 kg so i am so active now even as the age of 70 actually i feel like running and i have spent actually money to create a sort of gym in my house and i daily run for one or two hours daily on cross trainer so all this changes in lifestyle but that you can only do if you are healthy now if once you had a heart attack or if you are now uh, already taken over by a disease you cannot resume, resort to all that what i am saying so those who are normal please start changing their norm uh, lifestyle in order to remain active and healthy for large number of uh, years but that does not mean i mean uh, that uh, if you are sick you need to depend on if you are serious you need to the go to the hospital i was hospitalized sometime in may when i had a problem actually the enlargement of my prostate so i am not saying that don't take medicines uh, when you are ill you need to but when you are healthy start changing your uh, uh, microbiome and leading i have given my example for the simple reason that i wanted to convince you that by changing lifestyle you can really get rid of almost all now as you retire probably and those who are 
coming from government services, uh, probably they get a cashless uh, facility. So frequently they go to the hospital or health centers and they get free medicines and they continue taking medicines without realizing that these antibiotics will kill your uh, uh, beneficial organisms and they will change your microbiome, uh, which will not uh, be in, in the uh, good uh, taste. So that is one example which I have given in order to maintain good health. That was the reason, and that's why I myself, Professor Deshmukh, Sanjit Singh, who really did not know even uh, 20 or 30 years back that microorganisms will be so important. Now we wanted to tell our children, our young uh, uh, students and also society members that just by knowing that uh, microorganisms are very important and uh, you can change your lifestyle and can lead a healthy life. Uh, so that was one aspect of my discussion, microbiome and human health. Please get convinced that yes, microbiome or microbiology is really, not only for maintaining good health, even for uh, environment. For example, just we'll take one or two minutes to tell you, we had been, the one of my, uh, Nina mentioned in the uh, uh, introduction that uh, we had worked on a particular uh, chemical uh, dump site, which was almost, you see in Lucknow, a lot of chemical, something around uh, 40 to 50,000 toxic waste has been thrown on the government land. We were looking actually how to do bioremediation. And when you did the metagenome from this particular environment, where half of it was the chemical, we thought there will be no bacterial community. When you did that, we found out uh, simply that there are so many microorganisms within a span of five to 10 years, they have acquired the ability to eat those chemicals. They have acquired the genes actually uh, through horizontal gene transfer, the catabolic pathways, which never existed in those microorganisms. So microorganisms, they can alter and they can change themselves very rapidly uh, depending upon the environmental situation. So uh, that, that was very interesting. And based on that, we actually decided to perform field trials, not simply adding single organism, but to do the biostimulation. We could not succeed actually, uh, because in between corona, corona pandemic came and there were a lot more problems, but we are very uh, clear in my mind that it will not be a single microorganism that we need to add to this environment. We need to add a complete microbiome or we need to biostimulate. Another example I will give you uh, of Manikaran hot spring located uh, at a, an altitude of uh, 1700 meter in Manika, Manikar, when we actually say gushing water, very scenic place, you should visit probably uh, Sanjit Singh. Uh, uh, I think he, he knows about it, that there is a Gurudwara, there is a temple, and uh, it's a very scenic place. But we took this sample from the boiling water. We also isolated thermos uh, from that particular place on which we are still working. But we found out that there is a, there is a uh, very dynamic community of microbes and viruses existing at a, in, a, in a water that has temperature of something around 96 degrees centigrade. Not only that, the community was very different. There was one organism, Batalo Bibrio, that was highly enriched in, the, in that community. And when you looked into literature, what is this organism? We found out that it feeds on all gram-negative bacteria. So in order to, uh, that all, uh, that's the life cycle of Batalo Bibrio, which we found out by in silico studies. So we wanted actually uh, design uh, wet lab experiment to be sure if Badello is there or not. So what we did actually selectively enrich the culture, filtered it, and then we took the Badello Vibrio, enriched the samples, put them in E. coli. You can see actually Badello Vibrio sitting on E. coli. So your experiments that you do in silico studies can also supplement your uh, wet lab experiments. Uh, not only that, we came to know so many things probably uh, from in, in silico studies and that we actually supplemented by doing wet lab experiments. Not only this, even the harmonica and hot springs, we could assemble some genomes of 65 uh, viruses and relate them to the type of uh, uh, archaea and bacteria to which uh, 
uh, those viruses, there's a very dynamic environment which we thought there will be no organisms and chains that you followed did scanning electron microscopy. You can see actually the phages sitting on archaea as well as a, a bacteria. We did not stop here. We went above actually to 3000 meter. It was a very difficult track actually to Kir Ganga above Manikar. And many of my students, they got stuck up actually while tracking to that Manikar because we also did not know that it will be so difficult a uh, track. But finally we could make it and took the samples. It also took almost some five years for us to do the analysis and we are ready. And this paper got published in uh, Frontier in microbiology uh, uh, this year. We found out that there are uh, sulfur loving bacteria uh, which can be used in order to uh, remove the sulfur because that hot spring contained actually uh, Kheer Ganga would mean actually a, a white pulp of uh, 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 the sulfur was there actually where there was a temple actually. So probably all these studies eventually if taken up by uh, future uh, young students can lead to large number of biotechnological uh, applications. We are not stopped here, but we are also now surveying uh, actually uh, uh, looking into GIC based map of microbial diversity of uh, Ganges starting from Gangotri going up to uh, we have done actually the one year we got stuck up again because of Corona. So the second year sampling is being done and probably I'm very sure we will be able to give you some results after some time. Once this project gets over, there will be interesting data that will get uh, out of these uh, in silico studies. But the point again, from my examples, a couple of examples which I have given from my own experience, I want to convince you please get convinced that microorganisms are very important. And we scientists, including Dr. Deshmukh, Sanjit Singh, myself, and many others, now have the responsibility to tell almost everybody, not only to lecture in the schools or in the colleges, but also in different uh, platforms, uh, to tell actually that microorganisms, they are very uh, important. I gave you this particular example to convince you that less than one gram of virus has completely put this planet on its knees and we are not out of it. So understand actually when you talk about the entire microbial community, probably you can uh, realize the type of havoc those microorganisms they can create. We are, I'm not actually, as uh, Dr. Deshmukh also said, that uh, we are not doing it. I'm not doing it myself. This propagation of my, it has been taken up by my young colleagues. Uh, there are many young colleagues, uh, but then uh, Deshmukh also said that the Microbiological Society of India is a sort of platform. We should not have any ego actually. No, not at all. This is a platform which now should be given to everybody to propagate microbiology. And all other microbiological societies, they should come together. We should make a sort of federation of microbiological societies of India. Uh, and we all to, uh, together, uh, if come together, probably we can take up this mission in a very shorter time. So in a, in a, by spreading and doing alone would not serve the purpose. What we are doing, I'm doing it uh, using large number of uh, uh, platforms. As Nina mentioned, I'm the ambassador. I was the ambassador to American Society for Microbiology uh, from 2012 to 2015. And we went almost to all uh, colleges and schools across the country to propagate microbiology. I'm now the senior ambassador for International Society for Microbial Ecology. And recently, uh, I visited actually, and I was there in the conference. They appreciated the efforts that are going on in India. I'm also actually uh, ambassador now to Federation of European Microbiological Societies. I was also involved. I'm involved in uh, uh, AMI, and I'm also now involved uh, very frequently. Uh, Dr. Professor Deshmukh and his colleagues. They invite me and give me this particular platform to propagate microbiology. 
over and above we have a startup if nothing works at least ye jo lecture mein apne ghar se de raha hu maine do kamre bana rakhe hain wahan par we have a startup and i have a system actually to do whatever i can fix in private limited if nobody helps me and everybody say actually tries to eliminate you from different platform i will have a startup from where i will continue propagating microbiology but i'm very lucky had some 75 uh, phd students who are spread not only uh, in the entire india but also abroad and they actually keep on helping me we call it as a group of 25 young energetic faculty members and we call it as g5 and also we have a society of which i'm i'm also uh, very actively involved over there so all these platforms uh, another platform which i will mention again is imli international microbial uh, literacy initiative that we have recently started uh, uh, these are my young energetic students who keep on guiding me and giving me actually so new initiative that we have started now we are spotted now everybody knows that in india now we are including professor deshmukh and his colleagues are very active so even internationally people are now appreciating our efforts and international uh, uh, initiative which we call it as international microbial uh, uh, initiative for uh, literacy imli actually uh, with its headquarters in your professor kentim is who, who is very active and was a great scientist he is now has taken up this responsibility with me actually as the advisor to the uh, indian region so under this we have now started uh, propagating uh, microbial what we are doing under all these platforms targeting academic institutes thank you swarnjit singh ji and deshmukh ji giving me this uh, opportunity wherever i get an opportunity i simply forget doing any other thing however important assignments may be i simply actually take up uh, because i want to contribute to this microbial literacy mission to the extent in this particular life i can but we are preparing the resources dr deshmukh was talking about that they are now keeping a competition actually we have already prepared flip books actually alphabetics everything and we are going to the colleges we are going to the schools we are going to the society we are actually organizing conferences where complete one day is being kept uh, for microbial literacy mission actually or uh, this uh, we were discussing with professor deshmukh now we have a flip flip book where we are asking teacher uh, parents to teach their children a for apple not for uh, Uh, a for apple but a for arthrobacter b for bacillus not for banana c for not really for cat but for corona virus or uh, uh, then uh, b for virus e for e coli and not for element so this uh, already this uh, already available we are writing large number of uh, editorials with the international authors to make information available to the society translating it Uh, writing almost on daily basis we are planning to bring out a special issue on microbial literacy of indian journal of microbiology but we have already published this alphabet actually writing my colleagues writing proof books we want to make videos everything uh, available we have some financial crunch but still we are uh, very eager and we are very uh, uh, enthusiastic especially my colleagues uh, wanted to contribute to this site you can see actually we go to school in our native place in himachal some 60 to 70 of my young phd students and undergraduates we were initially alone but now many of uh, our colleagues uh, from different countries and from india they have come together and they are uh, uh, popularizing they want us to uh, and encouraging us to take up microbiology to the children because they are the future of uh, not only of uh, our country but uh, actually the uh, for them to understand the role of microorganism uh, to give better directions to this particular world uh, we are going to the schools whenever we get we are going to the colleges we give online lectures actually along with our 
international colleagues, a large number of activities we keep on performing. And fortunately, the response has been phenomenal. Uh, recently, actually, we, I did the same thing in Chittakara University. We organized 17 September for Sir Desh Mukhal, so he does it, uh, uh, which is an international uh, uh, microorganism day. We are this year also, we are doing it. Any conference we do, two themes are very important women in science, and second one is microbial literacy. So, this was the logo. And uh, Professor Deshmukh uh, was very kind enough to making me a part of uh, uh, this particular mission and releasing the calendar, which he did. Uh, uh, it's, it was very innovative work, which uh, Microbiology Society of India did it and involved me also last year. Uh, and very prominent events were mentioned over here. Uh, anywhere I get a word environment day, day uh, in order to actually uh, remember Professor Sri Krishnamurti, uh, uh, I delivered a lecture. Now on 17th of September, we are organizing Microsphere 2 and uh, 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 it's a, under this particular uh, international microbial literacy initiative uh, with Professor Kentemis and two or three renowned scientists. We are actually organizing, it's a very good group of some more than 50 international scientists who have come together. And uh, the seventh annual international conference that we're organizing online from 7 to 11th March. Uh, don't miss this opportunity to listen to very renowned scientists who are very enthusiastic to take up microbiology and to convince you what is happening in uh, microbiology and microbiome science. So this is all uh, online. Why you should? Because microorganisms and microbiology. So my request to Professor Deshmukh and Sanjit Singh. Uh, yes, uh, your, I, I appreciate your enthusiasm. I appreciate actually, and we all have now responsibility to ignite young minds actually. Let's forget our egos and go ahead, actually, uh, this is the opportunity that has come. And we have responsibility to propagate microbiology, take it to the masses, especially in India, and then throughout the world. And the second request is, all those who are listening to it, please integrate microbiology in your daily routine life. Go home. Tell your parents that microbiology is very important. Be our ambassadors. And start actually telling your parents, brothers and sisters, the importance of microbiology. The, if, uh, you can take up bits of uh, things which I have mentioned, and these are the realities. Please don't think that I have this lecture interesting. I have said this is a fact and literature message. So my request will be that with this particular, uh, 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 with this lecture, I want you to become, I don't want you to go to the lecture that we have given. Bulate Rao or Mary or Umar Badraya, Sema or active or to other Mary Jindagi or Badani, a Tapas, a Deshmuk, and Swaranjit Singh and Nina. Please keep on calling me, and I will, along with, with your support, take up this mission to propagate microbiology among the masses. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you, Deshmuk and Swaranjit Singh, uh, once again to give me this opportunity. Thank you very much. It was a very, very good, excellent lecture, Dr. Rupla. We have learned so many new things from you today, so many novel things, which we will practice in our daily life. You said that our lifestyle is very, very important. Yes, microbiology is very important. We have to take antibiotics, but we must avoid drugs. So we have to change our lifestyle along with minimum antibiotics and drugs. I thank you very much for the excellent lecture. And now it is open for question. Sir, one minute, please, sir. One minute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because I'm tempted to talk today by hearing the lecture of Roop Lal. No doubt. It was a very, very informative. But what I like, from her, he was talking. 
he is, he is a very very eager to propagate microbiology in the society and i salute to his honest attempt and i am very sure today on this occasion a very good personality like ruplal i want to assure you him microbiologist to society is always with you morally as well as financially dr swarnajit singh and i myself will be regular in touch with you with your new ideas with your new attempts and definitely will serve india serve humanity humanity in better way thank you sir thank yes. you very good now we can have a few questions from the audience afternoon sir uh, can i ask a question to professor ruplal yes sir yes. good afternoon professor ruplal it's ramaya from goa uh, great to meet you on the <laughs> yes actually i'm yes, seeing you on the uh, on the screen here yeah. and thank you for a very illustrative and a fantastic talk well, i i must compliment you for taking the example of your gut my microbe uh, biome uh, story and you were reduction from 96 kg to 66 kg now what a young man have you become <laughs> have you seen the changes changes in the kind of composition like permicules and other carbohydrate uh, uh, digesting uh, bacteria that you spoke about that uh, i didn't do that many people keep on asking because i don't have my gut microbiota when i was 96 kg Uh, and uh, really, but but I okay. can see I can feel the energy and uh, the, the type of uh, uh, this thing that I have now. Probably I was not as active as uh, I was ten uh, years before when I was uh, obese. Oh, yes. Yes. And now, uh, in fact, uh, in fact, in two thousand twelve, when you had two thousand eight. I'm sorry. uh you had been a chair for the talk i gave in chennai iit madras in that uh, you looked very very bulky and when i saw I saw you last in goa you become like an young uh, teenager kind of a thing thank you i was very surprised and thank you for your uh, connecting the microbes to the kind of health that people should be talking about this is one of the greatest uh, living example you have given and i see a lot of good things coming from educating people like this i'm very very glad that uh, this talk was organized on a teachers day where uh, your seminal experience is reaching hundreds of uh, uh, teachers plus uh, the audience like me thank you thank you sir thank you maya it was nice interacting with you yeah Uh, if nobody is asking a question, Professor Saranjit Singh, can I have one more uh, clarification from uh, Professor Ruplal? Yes, sir. Yeah, thanks again. Uh, see, this uh, microbial literacy uh, activity is one of the really great things to do. Are there uh, plans under the societies that uh, the Saranjit Singh C G and also Professor Deshmukh are handling? how about having a mobile lab for of those uh, students who can be kind of benefited from the live demonstration for example i worked for my phd on the marine bioluminescent bacteria you know that and uh, they, they can be a great example from marine uh, side of uh, the bacterial uh, uh, you know uh importance of uh, bacteria both in the ocean and on the land and uh, they are also a great sensor 
the sensors of the pollutants. These are the things that can instantly within 20 seconds be demonstrated to the effect that how the pollutants affect the entire ecosystem. And if there's an opportunity, I can share some of my papers. And then also uh, if uh, Professor Deshmukh uh, located in Pune is interested, I can share the knowledge base for taking this forward. Yes, sure, sure, Professor Maya. But you know what, what we are doing, because there was no time I did not mention. When we take the students, when we take, we go together some 60 or 70, somebody takes the microscope to the school, the other person will take bacteria, the uh, uh, nodules, uh, show them um, uh, uh, under microscope or otherwise, we take them to the ponds and show them the blue green algae. So uh, we actually do not really teach them, but we, it's a sort of make it very interesting for them. Uh, in fact, we are planning to develop a device that uh, can let them know actually that even bacteria may uh, produce uh, electricity. So your idea uh, is really, it's a very good novel thing that uh, if you can actually design a sort of uh, uh, very easy uh, experiment where students, they, they get convinced when you show them the things, rather only telling them or giving them lectures. So that's a very good idea. And I'm sure Professor Deshmukh and Shanjit and we together, maybe uh, we are planning actually a big uh, outreach program. I'll contact you and Deshmukh and invite you actually to be a part of it. I think it will be a very thrilling experience. Uh, thank you. I can do what I can, but definitely. Thank you, sir. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other participant want to interact with Dr. Ruplal, sir? Because Swarna Singh Ji, sir, is not able to join. Please, any other participant. Dr. Prakash Halami is there. Many other teachers are there. I think uh, now no one is uh, asking any question. One minute, Swarnajit Singh is uh, has entered. Hello, Swarnajit Singh, sir. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes. Ah, yes. You can take. Now over to you. All right. So, uh, Nina, are you there, Nina? No. I don't think. Okay, then we can conclude the session now. Yeah. Amita, are you there? Amita? Okay. All right. Then we can conclude the session now. Dr. Deshmukh, you have some comment you can give? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, already I have given the comment because I know Ruplal, sir, from 20 years back. Very good. And... Uh, Today's lecture, no doubt it was informative, but more than that, as he has also told, that he will contact us for future projects. Yes. So again, I will request Rupal, sir, we want to serve India. That is our motto of microbiology. And if we come together, we serve better this country. And uh, definitely, uh, we'll come together and we'll be in touch in the future. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. All right. Then I thank Professor Ruplal very much that he agreed to give a lecture to us on this auspicious day, Teacher's Day, which we will remember forever. I thank Dr. Deshmukh for giving us this platform to call renowned scientists and professors like Dr. Ruplal. And Dr. Ruplal, we assure you that we will always keep you in touch as a very, very active and prestigious member of this society. We'll always consult you if you have any difficulty and we will have discussions, panel discussion with you. Thank you. 
I thank all the audience for joining us today. Of course, this will be on YouTube. I thank Nina Mehta for giving us a beautiful welcome. And I thank um, again, Dr. Deshmukh for allowing us to use this platform to enrich ourselves in microbiology. Thank you very much. Thank you.